A Witch Flung Sky High by Lord Martia. Disney Kingdom Hearts Loops, page 178. It had been a while since Will started finding himself back in time while still keeping his powers, and by now he knew how to deal with Gwen slash Royal Pain slash Sue, but let's not go think about that early without getting in trouble himself. And yet this time he had been thrown a curveball with Gwen this time being a short redhead who, in her introduction speech to the freshmen, had pointed out it was created to not risk people with weak powers unnecessarily before admitting that it had been handled badly and somehow convinced Layla to demonstrate her powers to the coach and be enrolled in the hero track so she could change the system from the inside. He did it too, but to get closer to his target. After that unusual day, Will went to sleep and found himself in an empty space his only company being the new Gwen, who is now an adult wearing purple boots and a high collared shirt, skin tight short green pants, striped socks and two shades of green that covered her legs between the boots and the pants, and fingerless black gloves, and also had wings. Hello, Bale Stronghold, she saluted him. Uh, it's Will, he protested, earning a glare. I suppose you've been wondering why time started rewinding and you're the only one to remember, don't you? Well, the answer, as crazy as it sounds, is that the universe is a computer and it's broken. And the system admins, that is the gods, are putting all the universes in loop to repair it. Will blinked. Of all things he expected from this strange situation, being told that was not one of them. Must have been a dream. And he really shouldn't have tried that mystery meat. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? I wouldn't have believed it either had it not come from someone I could trust, Gwen admitted as she pulled out a large book and put it in his hands. Still, it's true, and this book includes most of what you need to know. Now, why don't you wake up and see that this isn't exactly a dream? With that, the empty space dissolved, and Will found himself lying in his bed, the book from his dream laid next to his head. The following day, Will tried to meet Gwen at school, but only caught the aftermath of her stopping Lash and Speed's bullying antics, electrocuted by faulty wiring. But, as expected, she once again showed up in his dream. So, did you have a good read, Bill? She asked. As he confirmed, she continued. Then welcome to the multiverse. I'm Will Vandom, from the Kandrakar Loops. By the way, a warning. The Loops aren't peaceful and easy. In fact, they're rather dangerous. Sometimes the danger comes from someone ending in a foreign loop and getting in a situation they aren't equipped to deal with. Those words are followed by a change in scenery, showing a man in a dark metallic armor pinned to a giant magnet while a blue-skinned man in a white military uniform looked at him with calm satisfaction. And sometimes you have to face loopers who actively cause damage. The scene changed again showing Will Vandom and four other girls trying desperately to stave off a horde of things as a cute-looking critter watched with a smile. In fact, I'm going to use this loop as a little test, she continued. I'm going to try Royal Payne's plan. Wait, you can't! I can and I will, but to make things less one-sided, I'll only use technopathy in this endeavor, both mine and the one I got from replacing your villain, plus my experience. I am also giving you a week to make preparations before I continue from where I left. Good luck. You'll need it. And with that, the dream ended. True to her word, the other Will gave him a week before attacking. A week he used to set alarms, cameras, and detectors to know when to intervene and get his parents on the case. There had been a little scare the first day when a blackout interrupted the feed, but Will saw that the other Will was still at school. A few hours after that, however, she made her first raid trying to sneak in a small recovery bot, then a squadron of giant robots. And as the months passed, her attempts at recovering the pacifier grew crazier, culminating in a cooking-themed mecha that fired carrot-shaped missiles. That one had actually defeated his parents and gave him a desperate run for his money, much worse than Gwen had ever managed. Nonetheless, homecoming had arrived and the pacifier was still in the secret sanctum. And now Gwen was about to make a speech to the assembled teachers, students, and alumni. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm well known for my criticism of the hero's sidekick divide, she started. Oh, I do recognize that some superpowers aren't exactly useful, no matter what. I can't think of a serious use of things like turning into a beach balloon. Hey! The other world blinked for a moment. Nothing. Seriously? Apparently she had believed it was a joke. Then she resumed her speech. 
and so some superpowered people should be kept out of unnecessary danger. My problem is the way it's done. Little combat training to defend themselves, or do some jobs by themselves, rampant bullying from supposed heroes. Not only is it unjust and a waste of people's powers, but do you have any idea of what could happen if someone shunted away as a sidekick for supposedly lame powers become resentful and changing circumstances made her powers much stronger? Such as for a technopath with an age-altering device. That was when Will started realizing something was amiss and tried to fly, unsuccessfully. She could come back to the school, wait for the right moment where you're all in one place to put you under the effects of a power nullifier, gloat to you about what she had just done from the safety of a force field, show you that the highly qualified janitors and bus drivers with the technological knowledge to wreck her plans, and that was when every single janitor and bus driver popped out and chained and gagged from the roof. And, before turning into toddlers and deciding if she would raise you as villains or just let this be a lesson in manners, show you exactly who you're dealing with. At that point, she changed into her armor under an apparent dress, made a mock bow, and putting on the helmet, presented herself as Will Vandom, also known as Royal Pain. Royal Pain is a girl. The commander asked. Mrs. Stronghold, if I decide to give you back your ages, please keep this chauvinist on the couch for a while. And with that, a dozen automated pacifiers popped out of the roof and turned everyone but Gwen and Stitches into toddlers, with the power nullifier keeping Medulla from being able to think his way out of it. Where is everyone? Will asked when the other Will, now in the form he had always seen her in the dreams turned him back to his real age. Stitches is putting them all into various locations, some embarrassing depending on how I feel about them, she replied. Don't worry, I'm going to turn them all back to their real ages. Now do you get it? Boopers are the real deal, not supervillains that I'm starting to believe have been trained wrong on purpose by this school. How did you get it? And when? The first day after the truce. I spent the week to put together at the ultrasonic remote stopper. Wouldn't believe where I saw it. A scanner and a robotic double. And while the double made you think I was still here, I just waited to your home that I knew where it was thanks to the eye of the bot, blocked all alarms and electronic security, entered and scanned the pacifier to know how to make more. Then I just launched a few overt attacks just to make you think I hadn't got it yet while I put together the force field and the nullifier in this room. Easy, simple, and not a wacky Silver Age plan with more holes than machine gun Swiss cheese. You know what you did wrong, Bill? You should have made a mock-up of the pacifier. Your parents can't tell the real thing anyway. Then destroyed the real thing during the truce, and after that try and expose me. Or just bashed me in the head. But don't worry, I'll teach you a few tricks in the time we've got left. And lesson number one, when I'm around, the only will is me. The Angel Diaries. When it comes to finding excuses to recall some forgotten stories and obscure characters, you've crashed for less.